Okay. I want to welcome uh, everyone. This is Manesh Patel from Alert Trades. Uh, today's workshop we're going to be talking about is global seasonality. Notice I talked about workshop. This is not a marketing workshop at all. This is a trader's workshop. So our goal is to sit there and help you sit there and use seasonality to improve your trading or to even assist your trading or whatever may be the case. Okay. Why are we talking about seasonality? Seasonality is a mixed word that's used a lot in the world today. I wrote an article for our monthly newsletter this month in regards to seasonality. The word seasonality has now become a marketing gimmick where a lot of vendors are using this as a gimmick to pretty much start promoting their software and charging a lot of money and so forth. A lot of people are buying packages out there uh, for thousands of dollars and then paying monthly data feeds and they're not making their money back at all. Okay. And the reason why is, is that a lot of people paint, uh, paint this picture of seasonality to be this glorious picture and it works without any technical analysis and stuff like that. That is not the case at all. So <clears throat> today we're going to show you how to use seasonality correctly and we're going to show it from the simplest form. Okay. So this is a trader's workshop. So I'm going to show you a lot of unique things in seasonality that you probably have not seen anyone else do out there. There's pattern recognition in seasonality too, which most people don't look at, and we're gonna do uh, look at that. There's also looking at volatility, which most people don't even look at also, okay? The other thing is, is that when we look at seasonality, we look at it as a catalyst. Even though seasonality may say the instrument's gonna go up, we don't necessarily think that way always. We think there's gonna be a setup, whether it be bullish or bearish, it does not matter to us. Okay, and I'll talk about more of these things as we go into the workshop and start beginning the process. Okay, if you guys have any questions, please I'll put them in the Q and A. And what we'll do is we'll sit there and go through them as the presentation goes forward. Uh, if we don't get to them, do not worry. I will sit there and send out an email with the questions in the Q and A and stuff like that later. Okay. <clears throat> As I mentioned, this is a recorded webinar, and you guys will sit there and get the recording uh, within one to three business days because it does take some time to convert across the recording, okay? Since this is a live webinar and workshop, we have to go for a disclaimer since we are licensed. That basically means this is for education use only. We're not soliciting you buy or selling particular instruments. If you do so, you, you're doing at your own risk. All information is owned by EII Capital Group. It cannot be copied or distributed without our written permission. We are broker neutral, so we support all the various charting and brokerage platforms out there from TradeStation, eSignal, Thinkorswim, Ninja, TradingView, and so forth, okay? So this is our normal disclaimer, so let's go through everything. Now, <clears throat> a lot of you guys have probably seen this little, little screenshot here. Uh, it's a simple screenshot here, and it basically talks about what we have available today, okay? If you look here, it says Alert Trades. That's basically the name of the company, and the logo here is pretty much the logo that references the company. So we have three different products for Alert Trades. So you could see Alert Trades through a browser. So if you go to www.alerttrades.com, you could access the software that way, or you could go to the Apple Store or the Android Store, look for Alert Trades with this logo there, and download the app, and now it's also available on your mobile phone. So this application is available on mobile phones, tablets, website, and so forth. So it's a global application out there, okay? And that's one of the reasons why I have this here so that you could see that it's a global application. Most people are doing either mobile or doing web or not all of it. So we're supporting everything there uh, that you could think of, okay? So <clears throat> let's proceed forward and let's st now start talking about the software. The very first question a lot of people ask us is what markets do we support? If you notice most of the global seasonality software out there, it pretty much just supports US stocks. Some people now are supporting Forex market, some people are also supporting for a futures market out there. However, not a lot of people are supporting any other global instruments out there, okay? Give me one sec. Okay, so not a lot of people supporting any of the global markets out there at all. Let me give you an example. There's no one really supporting UK stock market, Australian stock market, China, India, Middle East, and so forth. 
The software that we have available pretty much support all the global instruments out there. In fact, if you look at the database of symbols that we support, we support over 8,000 instruments globally. Okay, If there's an instrument there that you see that's not in our database, all you have to do is email us and we'll sit there and add it for you. It's no problem at all. We have access to all the data for every instrument out there from stocks, currencies, bonds, futures, and everything out there. So we could pretty much add anything there, including fixed income uh, type of products too. But if you sit there and just look at it from a high level, we support on the US stocks, the Russell 2000, the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P 500. And we, what we do is we do a little filtering there. Reason why is you have to have good data in order to do seasonal software analysis. So what we do is we only support stocks above 100, have an average of 100K average volume over a 60 day period. On the currency side, we support all the major currencies out there, including some exotic currencies out there too. We support all the US futures out there from gold, crude oil, cotton, sugar, and so forth, lean hogs, uh, and uh, so forth. We support all the European markets out there from UK, Switzerland, Germany, and so forth. We support Middle East markets from basically Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait, everything there. We also support various uh, different markets in the Africa region too. I know a lot of people haven't heard of it, but it's a slow upcoming market that's coming about now. There's starting to be more and more liquidity there so that we do support all that stuff there. On Asia, we support everything from Singapore, Malaysia, China, um, and so forth there. If you count South Asia, we support India. And then also we cover uh, everything, uh, Australia and so forth. So if you look at it, our software is pretty much a global entity software. That means we support all the global instruments out there. When we created the software, we just didn't want to sit there and do one different one product at all. We wanted it to be a global view. Why? In order for you to be successful today, you have to be diverse. If you're not diverse, you're not going to be consistently profitable. Reason why is you need to go where the trends are. If the U.S. stock market's basically consolidating, you need to go find a global market that's available that is trending. And that's what the software is going to be able to do. It's going to let you branch out to various different parts of the world and find opportunities very easily and sit there and trade them with a potential of three to one reward risk ratio or higher. Okay, some of you guys may be thinking, well, how do I trade that from the US? Believe it or not, there's different brokerage platforms that will allow you to trade instruments globally too. Okay, so that's something you can investigate. And other people around the world, you could trade our stock markets too. Uh, you just have to check the regulations for the, uh, the country that you're in. Okay, so a lot of people go for a lot of marketing spill and so forth. I'm going to go for the marketing spill right now. Okay, so let's go for the sales pitch right now and get this over with. And then we're going to talk about trades. Uh, we're going to show you some existing trades that we've taken today. We've taken trades a couple of months ago, a year or two ago when we first started beta testing and so forth. So we're going to talk about some live opportunities that we had, even one trade today that we occurred. Okay, um, so what is the catch? <clears throat> There's two parts of software. One is the free version. Okay. The free version basically allows you to see any instrument in the world. Okay. It basically gives you monthly seasonality. What do I mean by that? When you look at a particular instrument, for example, Apple, and you pull it up, it'll basically allow you to choose the month, January, February, March, April, and so forth. And in that process, what it'll do is it'll find the seasonality where it looks at the first of the month to the end of the month. So everything is a monthly basis for the seasonality for any instrument out there. Okay. We'll show you how to use the free version and how to make money from that too. Okay. Uh, and then we just released this month. In fact, today's the first day of the release because we've been in beta testing is what we call our calendar scanner. Okay. And in this calendar scanner, it still gives you a 30 day seasonality, but what it does is it allows you to sit there and you can look at any particular date this month and it'll find you the best opportunities from bullish and bearish for any global market. And we'll talk about that once we get to that section and you'll see exactly how it works and it's very easy to do, okay? The cost for the calendar, see the, the scanner for the calendar is only $100 a year. That's it, okay? so. If you think we're going to charge you thousands of dollars, no. Are there any data feeds involved? No, not at all. There's no data feeds or anything involved at all. The free, the, we have the free version, and if you want the scanner portion, it's only $100 a year. Okay. 
and the, that's pretty much the link that they'll take you there so you can pretty much buy it whenever you want. Now that we've got the sales pitch done, let's get into the real traders workshop, which is what I like to do. Okay. So first thing I want to do is break down the software. So this is our basic screen layout for the free version. This is what you get for the free version. This is basically the monthly seasonality where it looks at the first of the month to the end of the month. Okay. And this is what you're going to see every single time, no matter what instrument you pull up. Okay. The very first thing you have is this little box right there. You click on that little box and you put the symbol in. You could put a symbol in, you could put the description in, you could boot anything right there. You could put some wildcard numbers in there and what it'll do is it'll automatically find everything in our database searching the symbol and description for what you typed in there, okay? The second thing you would choose is the month. What month do you wanna see the seasonality for? Okay, in this example, it's March. But if you do a drop down there, you could see all the months that you have right now. You could see months from the past, so you could do back testing if you like. And you could also see a month, a couple of months ahead of you, all the way to the end of the year. Okay, so you could see that in here, we actually started the beta process back in January 2016 for this software. And you could see we have all the data from January 2016 to basically this year to the end of this year. Okay, so when 2018 rolls around, you'll see have all the data from 2016 and 2017 and so forth. So you could do any back testing you like, and you could also do forward testing with the software too. Okay, and this is all in the free version too. Okay, the other thing I want to show you is is that all the values in this table are percentages. Okay, so when you see that 2.1 and the max drawdown for the prediction, that's 2.1%. So all the values in the table are percentage values, okay? Some people think they're just numbers, how many point movements and stuff like that. No, when you deal with seasonality, you have to deal with percentages, and that's kind of what we're doing here, okay? The other thing is, is that on seasonality, a lot of people look at different number of years. Our software was designed specifically look for 10 years and that's it, okay? We do not look at anything over 10 years. And the reason why is if you start looking at too much data, you start getting distortions and stuff like that. And you start getting anomalies in the data and it can't really be used that effectively at all, okay? What we found after years of research is, is that if you look at 10 years of data, you could really, really get some high accuracy with the information. Okay. Now there are some symbols that don't have 10 years of data. Okay. If they don't, whatever number of years they have, that's what we're going to display, but you're never going to see anything that's over 10 years at all. Okay. So, and if you look down here at the, this column right here, you could see all the years information. So that's 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. So all the years that we have, we're going to show you here and you can see right beside the year, it'll show you arrow, whether it be up or down, it's color coded. So it'll tell you if it's a bullish year, bearish year and so forth there. Okay. <clears throat> After above all those years is the prediction. So this basically takes the average of all information for all those years and gives you a prediction of what the seasonality is going to tell you. Okay. Now, we're going to go for a formula a little later, okay? But most people, what they do is when you look at seasonality, you look at a start date to end date, and you look at that year by year by year, and people look at the percentage movement for those years. We do not do that at all. We have a proprietary formula. And why? When I was using the seasonal software, other people's seasonal software before, I found that it was not too accurate at all. And the reason why is, is that due to one word, volatility. A lot of the seasonal software, when you just look at percentage movements from a certain date to another date for year by year by year, it doesn't account for volatility at all. One year, you may have been a bearish year. Next year, you could have been a bullish year, and it distorts the data. So our formula is actually look at the volatility on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly, and yearly. And based on that data, that's when we start crunching all this data and that's when we get the formulas in there and so forth. So if you look at our percentage values here, they're gonna be different from most seasonal software packages out there. Reason why is they're not taking into account volatility whereas we are, okay? And that's the biggest difference there between us and everyone else, okay? Now, let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> so the next thing I wanna talk about is this little confidence value here. 
okay? And you could see the confidence value is 69% there, okay? Now, I mentioned earlier our formula is different, okay? And this is the perfect way you're gonna see why it is different too. So if you look at the 69%, most people, what they do is they'll sit there and say, how many years were bullish? One, two, three years were bullish in this data. How many years were bearish? There's five years are bearish. And then what they do is they say there's eight years of data. And what they'll do is basically they'll sit there and figure out what percentage was bearish. So they'll say five divided by eight, and that gives you a percentage, and that's the value that you would get right here, okay? That's not what we do at all. We actually look at each individual year and we see how much it moved. You could sit there and have a bullish year and if it only moved half of a percent, that really does not matter at all, okay? So we kind of throw out these anomalies and stuff like that. So we readjust our formula there to take into account all these anomalies that can happen. And that's one of the reasons why our confidence value is different from everyone else, and it's a lot more accurate, you'll see, in predicting everything that's going forward, okay? <clears throat> so if you saw, oh, here's the calculation right there, 62.5, and you can see we're not really at 62, we're at 69% here, so you could see our confidence value is different there. Now, if you're trying to figure out how do I use all this stuff, don't worry. I'm going to give you the magical formula of how to use this to find the opportunities in just a moment, okay? The next thing, uh, I think we just went through this. <coughs> oh, the next value I want to describe is this SIV value. This is probably one of the most important columns that you'll see. Why? When you start de dealing with seasonality, the problem came down to when I started playing with seasonality years ago was is that you could sit there and have a 90% accuracy. But the problem was is that the instrument consolidated, it was no good at all. Because you go for a drawdown, then you go for up. And the thing is, is that if you start entering at the beginning of the day and you go to the end, you may only get 0.5% price movement, which really you can't make any money at all. So the only way seasonality works is if, if that instrument trends that month. So if the instrument trends that month, and you got a seasonality confidence value that's good, now you got two things that basically tell you that you're gonna make some potential money. And that's exactly what this value does. The SIV value stands for seasonal index value. And basically from a high level, it tells you if the instrument's gonna move or if it's gonna go sideways. You want the instrument to move. If it doesn't move, then basically you're not gonna make much money at all, okay? So if you look in here, how does it work? What we do is we look at everything from January to December. And then what we do is we say, okay, from January to December, it's gonna move 100% of the price action, okay? So when you look at this 20.3% for the SIV value, that's telling you that in this month here, for this particular instrument, 20% of all the price action for the entire year is gonna be in this month. And that's exactly what you want. You want things that are moving. And what we look for, and I'll go for this a little later, is this value to be 10% or higher for bullish or negative 10 and lower for bearish. So if it's moving, if 10% of the price action for the entire year is in that month, then you know it's going to be trending, okay? So <clears throat> that's what we're going to look for, and I'll go for that formula in just a moment, okay? The other thing a lot of people don't look at is reward risk. One of the keys to consistent profits is looking at reward risk. Why does reward risk matter? A lot of people tell you when you buy the seasonal software, well, it tells you from this date to this date to buy it, or this date to this date, it sells it, just go in. You don't need technical analysis at all. They're wrong, you do. Why? You could sit there and go for a drawdown before you sit there and actually go through the price action movement. Is, is that good for people? No, it's not. How can you tell if the opportunity is great or not? How can you tell if the, the drawdown is big or not? The only way you could do that is do a reward risk calculation. And if you find that the reward risk is not great, that means you have to sit there and use technical analysis to make sure you avoid the drawdown, okay? So let me tell you what I do. So I take this movement here in the prediction. So you look at that negative 9.8. Okay, and I take the max drawdown here, which is 2.7. So I take 9.8 divided by 
divide by 2.7, that gives me 3.6. That tells me my potential reward risk is gonna be 3.6. That means I'm gonna risk $1 to make at least $3.60 on this particular opportunity for every dollar I invested. Is everyone okay with this? Yes? Now, if you get something less than three to one, be very, very careful, okay? Make sure you have a very, very tight technical plan. We'll show you how we do our technical analysis in just a moment, what time frames and so forth we go and use when we go for our examples, but Basically, if you have anything less than 3% three, three or lower for the reward risk, you better make sure that you're doing technical analysis correct, okay? Reason why is that means you're going to go for a drawdown. Now, one of the things that I'm going to talk about right now is, is that when do you go for drawdown? Why do we choose a 30-day cycle? We noticed a pattern in a 30-day seasonality cycle, and do you know what that is? The drawdown typically happens in the first 15 days of the second 15 days. So if you're looking at a particular instrument and it doesn't, and it's telling you that it was a 90% probability of going up, then what you do is you look for the setup in the first 15 days. If it doesn't occur in the first couple of days, that means it's going to occur after the 15th day. Okay. So we really look at that type of scenario, and that's one of the reasons why we look at a 30-day cycle is because we know that things happen in 15 days. So if we don't see it at the very beginning, we know to come back at the halfway of that 30-day cycle and we'll start looking for a setup on our technical analysis side where we can start there and start making money. And it's very, very accurate, believe it or not, by doing that, okay? So we'll talk about that more as we go forward. So what is our trading plan for seasonality? Here's what it is. It's as simple as this. For a bullish trend, which is what we're always looking for because it gives us the highest reward risk ratio, we're looking for a confidence value of above 70 and we're looking for an SIV value of 10% or higher, okay? So that is the magical formula right there. So that tells you exactly what you should be looking for and when, it's, okay? For the bearish side, it's basically this, looking for a confidence value of 70% but SIV value less than 10%. That's it. These are the two things that you have to know, and that's all you have to do. So all you do is you find the instruments that meet these criteria, and then you pump them for your technical plan and trade them and move forward, and that's it. Okay? So let's go for, forward with this. <clears throat> Let's go for some examples. Now I'm gonna go back from the very beginning of our, our testing cycle and kind of show you some examples from there and go from there. So this is uh, Texas Instruments, uh, sorry, this title's wrong. This is the E-mini S&P 500 futures and this is basically January 2015. And notice one thing, this has a confidence value of 56% and an SIV value of negative 17. So negative 17, so 17% 17 of the entire price action for the entire year is going to be in this month in January. So you know it's going to move and you know it's negative value, so it's a high probability of moving down. The problem that in, you have in here is it's not a good confidence value. You're looking for 70% or more, okay? Now, later on, I'm going to show you how this is still an opportunity there. Most seasonal software packages walk away from this because it doesn't have a confidence value that's 80% or higher. However, there's a pattern in here, and I'm gonna show you this in just a moment. So if you know, and actually, you know what? Let's go for it right now. Notice one thing. You have three down years, three up years, and two down years. So if it continues with this three down, three up, then 2016 was gonna be what? Bullish, okay? And if you look at the charts here, if that's the case, all you do is look for a bullish setup on your tr on whatever trading time frame you do for the E-mini S&P 500 futures for January, and this is the statistics that you're going to look at there, okay? Now, look what happened here, okay? Sorry, not bullish, but bearish, okay? And if you look here, I marked off the beginning of January there, and I marked off the, the lowest point here and when January ended. And you could see here that this, and you could look at the percentage movements here, this went down a total of 11% down there. At the end of the month, it closed out at 6% down. 
okay? So if you look at it here, it met in these prediction values right there. The average move is 5.9%, max profit is 5.8.9. And if you look here, at the end of the month, it was right about 5.9 right there, okay? So you could see this was really good. This was a gold mine here. A lot of seasonal software walks away with this because it's a 56%. They're looking for 80, 90. But if you look for patterns in here, so then you can find an opportunity. So our rule of thumb is, is that if this is 70% higher, that tells you it's trending. If it's less than 70%, we're looking for a pattern. If we don't see a pattern, we walk away from it. And I'll show you some more of these in just a moment, okay? <clears throat> now, here's Texas Instrument here. This title's wrong. That's actually the E-mini right there, not the uh, Texas Instrument, okay? Here's Texas Instrument here. This is October 2015. This is 82% right there. And you could see here, this is 82% with the SIV value above 10. That's exactly what we're looking for. Notice this is 23%, which is really, really good. Now, one thing I don't like is the reward risk in here. So you have to make sure with technical analysis, you'll look for a setup and keep your risk low, okay? So if you look at the chart here, here's Texas Instruments here. You could see where the beginning of the month to the end of the month here, and you could see the price action movement. It moved here, and it worked out really well. All you had to do was look for a setup here, okay? This is a daily time frame here, but you could have looked on a lower time frame. Whatever time frames you want, you could look for a setup. Remember, it's a 30-day cycle, so you want to make sure you got a time frame is accurate. A lot of people don't use seasonality for currencies. Well, guess what? Here's one here. This is the same one we presented at the Toronto Money Show here. This is Australian CAD, May of 2017. This had a confidence value of 90%, SIV value of, net of 15. So this fits our criteria right here. Here's the best part. Look at this. 2.2 divided by 0.9. That gives us right here. It's not a quite three to one, but we're getting close up there, okay? So that's what you're looking for right there. And look what happened here. It went up, which is your drawdown, and then it went down exactly like it predicted. This is why you use technical analysis here to sit there and make sure you avoid the drawdowns there. So if you sat there and look for a trading opportunity here on a 60 minutes, a two hour, four hour, even 30 minutes, you probably would have got a setup somewhere right here which allowed you to take this ride all the way down there and avoid the drawdown of entering at the beginning of the month and going to the end of the month there. Okay, here's crude oil, August 2017. A lot of people think you can't sit there and do seasonality and crude oil. Here you go. This was a 10% SIV value, which is above 10, and confidence of 73, which is exactly what you're looking for. Okay, notice one thing also. Look at the patterns, five and five. But you really don't need to sit there and look at the pattern because you got a 73%. Okay, now. Look what happened here. This said 73%, 10%. Look what happened. Which way did it go? Down. Okay. This is what I was talking about here. If you sit there and look at this as a catalyst, that something's going to happen, you could sit there and actually enter some really good trades. So in this trade here, this went down. So what happened in here is the pattern took over the percentages. Do you guys see that? This is what's so great about the seasonal software that we have. You can look for these patterns here and you could enter a lot of these opportunities that most people will never find. And we do that day in and day out. And I'll show you some more in just a moment, okay? So that's crude oil here where it moved down 3.2%. Here's Apple, July 2017, 80% basically going up, 16% SIV value, which is exactly what we're looking for. There's no pattern here to destroy this at all. So we sit there, whoops, and you look at it here, it went for a little drawdown here, and if you look at here, what's the drawdown? It's a four to one, well, actually it's a little over three, three to one here, and you can see it went for a little drawdown here, and then it went up exactly as the seasonal software predicted, okay? The title's wrong here, this is the Apple chart, believe it or not, okay? Now, here's some pattern recognizers. Okay, so this is basically E-mini again in January. Notice this percentage is 56%. Look what happened here. Three, three, two, and three. And you could see that here it moved 6% that year, 
uh, so 2016, so this is the one we just discussed, okay? So this is the alternating three pattern here. Here's one on May of GDX, the gold uh, ETF here. Notice the pattern here. It says three, one, and now you got a three. So basically 2016 was gonna be a down year, an average move of 4.1. Look at the results, what happened here. And you can look here, it didn't move 4.0% at all as a prediction, it moved 13%. So this was a great, great trade here that most people would have walked away with because it's only a 79% uh, accuracy and confidence value there, okay? Here's another one. This is only a 69%, but look what's going on here, okay? You had a three pattern here, and then all of a sudden it started a pattern. Down one, up two down one, and now you got a high probability of being up here. So all you have to do is look for a bullish setup based on your technical plan for a bullish scenario here, and you got a good movement of 14% with an SIV value of 25. And if you look at the chart here, this is what we got. This is basically a four hour chart here that we entered here, okay? And this is a four hour chart that we entered here, and you could see, in, if you're following us on the IMTF side, a green shaded area means it's bullish. And in that green shaded area, we had some crosses here that allows us to basically do a pullback trade here. So we did a pullback trade right there. There's our reward risk here. This is the potential of 11 to 1 reward risk ratio here for this particular trade. And guess what? This is today. This is not old. This is not November of last year. This is November right now. This is basically children's place that gapped up today based on earnings right there. And you could see this was a pattern recognition that we found here, not something that's confidence at all. So a lot of people walked away with this on the seasonal side because it did not have a great confidence value at all. But we actually look at this here. We waited for a setup, which we got right there. And then we basically sat there and followed our trading plan. We entered this and you could see the 11 to 1 reward risk ratio there. Okay, do you guys look like what you're seeing so far? Okay, now, <clears throat> so in the free version, you could sit there and put it any symbol in, and you could pretty much see the statistics for it on a monthly basis, uh, pretty much for the global instruments worldwide. Okay, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we released a global scanner, which is today pretty much is the first release date for it today, which is only a hundred dollars a year. And let me show you what we've done in there. Okay, so we didn't release just a, a scanner, but we released what we call a calendar scanner. And why everyone sits there and wants a calendar, and everyone references a calendar day by day. Okay, why not sit there and show you day by day what the highest probability trades are for any global market out there? And that's exactly what we did here. So you have a calendar that tells you exactly what to look for. Okay, so here's a screen for the calendar. We call it under opportunities. So once you have the subscription, if you go under the trending menu here, you'll see a section called opportunities, and that's where you'll see this here. Okay, so under the calendar, you choose what month you want to see. So basically January all the way to November uh, should be December too in here, but uh, my screenshot cut it off there, okay? Second thing, you choose the opportunity. So in this opportunity here, in the scanner, calendar scanner, we're only giving you an options where you can find 90, 80, and 70%. We're not gonna allow you to sit there and choose anything lower. Reason why, it's not trending. Why are we gonna do that at all? So the very first thing you always do is to click on 90% to see if there's an opportunity there. And then second, markets here. So right now, we basically support all the U.S. stock market there, uh, U.K. stock markets. This also includes Germany and Switzerland and so forth. India, Canada, futures, currencies, and Australia will be added in about a week or two weeks. Okay, And slowly, we're adding all the other countries in there too. Okay, So this is exactly where you choose all these opportunities here. And at that point, then you choose the week. So if I click in this example here, I have currencies, I wanna see 90% for November. So this is today, this month here, okay? I clicked on week four and notice it only gave me one date. That means out of the five days in the week four for November, there was only one opportunity there, which was only on November 24th, which is basically the Switzy yen spot currency there. So it only shows you the dates that have opportunities there. 
it shows you both the bullish and bearish. So notice there's nothing on bearish, there's nothing else any other week there, okay? The other good thing is if you put your mouse over that symbol, it actually gives you all the statistics there. It gives you the confidence value, the SIV value, the average move, max profit, max drawdown. So it gives you all the statistics right there. All you have to do is put your mouse over it and you can see all that information there, okay? So let's go for some examples. So what we did was we took our seasonal scanner and we basically done some scans and we put some live trades on. Some of these snapshots are right before the money, sh uh, the money show in Toronto, which basically occurred, I think, the first week in September. Okay, so if it was first week in September, a lot of these scans were August trades that we took that we basically presented in the, uh, the Toronto trade show here. So this is basically week two here, 90% uh, we're looking at for the US uh, stock market and basically NVIDIA came up here. And if you look here, we went to a 60 minute time frame. We looked for a setup on a 60 minute and you could see the green shade here, which means bullish. Then you have these black uh, squares here, which is the support. So we entered a pullback trade right there. Uh, the green dots was our risk. And we basically sat there and took this all the way up to there. This gave us over a seven to one reward risk ratio right there, okay? We went down, why did we go to a 60 minute? A lot of times with our seasonal opportunities, we look for trades on the 60 minutes, uh, two hour or four hour, because remember those trades are the ones that are gonna pretty much cover the cycle that we need. Why 60 minute is a great one that I think. Well, if you notice, I told you at the very beginning that seasonal software for 90 day seasonality, sorry, 30 day seasonality occurs in 15 day increments. If you trade a 60 minute, those trades typically last about a week. So uh, that basically covers that 15 days. So you could sit there and trade a 60 minute very accurately sit there, make money on there, and not go for any drawdowns or anything but with the other sec second 15 days coming or going and so forth, okay? Um, here's LB, 60 minute, this is August 2. You can see at a 90% confidence value here, average move is 77.3, max drawdown here, 5.1. Reward risk is not that great in this, and notice that one, okay? Now, look what happened here. If you notice here, this is said it's bullish. Which way did we take it? We took it bearish. Why? Our higher time turns were bearish, and we got a setup right around the seasonal date going what? Bearish. So we took this thing bearish. And the reason why is we look at these opportunities as catalyst for something to happen. If it's bullish, it's got a higher accuracy. But if it still doesn't mean that we're not gonna sit there and take a bearish trade if our trading plan allows us to. So in this scenario here, we took the 60 minute bearish trade. Reason why is all the higher time frames were bearish and showing us signs where this thing was gonna go down. So we just looked at the seasonal software as being a catalyst and allowed our technical charts to govern which way we actually traded this, okay? Here's US CAD August 1st. Notice this had an 80% accuracy here. And you could see here seasonal index 11%. And you could see here, this is a 240 minute time frame, a four hour time frame. We've got a bullish setup here and then basically triggered on a breakout there. Didn't do a pullback, but did a breakout here. And you could see how far it went up there. Okay, here's sugar. A lot of people think you can't do seasonality on, on futures at all, especially exotic type of futures like sugar. But September 6, basically sugar popped up on the scanner here. Uh, and you can see it's good confidence value here. Drawdown max, not the great reward risk ratio, but it doesn't matter. We're going to pump it through technical analysis. Here's a four hour chart right there. And you could see that we got a green shaded area here with the black crosses right there. So we did a pullback trade right there. Our stop was right there. And you could see that it basically retested the pivot high and went higher. So we got our three to one reward risk ratio when it retested the pivot high and kept on going. Okay. Um, there was a question, once a stock comes up for a specific date, how long do we track it for? So as I mentioned, you typically, I would trap, uh, track it for at least a day or two, uh, about what's, I would say about the three days. If you don't see it after three days there, then I would pretty much come back after the 15 day window opportunity. And within th three days, also in the 15 days is when you're gonna see the setups occur too, okay? So pretty much the setups occur between the, fir, the, the start date, which is plus or minus three days, and then also after the 15th day uh, on that cycle too. Here's EQIX. 
This is basically September 8th here. This basically was bearish, 92% confidence here. 60 minute we're here. We had a breakout setup here because it never did a pullback. And you can see how well this kind of thing went down here really effectively here. Okay. Now, we've covered some basic examples. Now, I want to show you that this software pretty much works around the globe. You can't really see seasonality for any instrument around the world. I'm going to show you that you can. Here is the Canadian stock market here. This is AUG TX. Now, I know nothing about these instruments at all, and I don't care to. Okay. All I know is I'm going to do technical analysis here. The scanner is basically going to find them. I'm going to pump them for my technical plan. If it tells me to go, I set up and go. And that's exactly what we did here. So for Toronto show here, we started looking at some Toronto uh, TSX trades here. This one came up here. is 90%. And you could see August 2, basically, it was a bullish setup here. And you could see that we had, not on August 2, but roughly, well, it actually was. It was about August 2, the end of the day. It pretty much set up here with this green shaded area here. We did a pullback right there. It broke out and then basically went up here. And in fact, right when the show started is when we basically got out because these black dots here means it's overextended. So we actually took profits live at the Toronto trade show uh, for this particular trade here. Uh, here's another one. You barely could see this. This is the Indian stock market for this month. I ran it for 90% there. Basically, November 1st, Wipro basically showed up. 91% confidence value. Average move of 3.9. Drawdown was negative 7. So you had an inverted reward risk. So you have to be very careful here. Okay. And here's a little zoomed in for part for that there. And you could see here, this was basically November 1st here. And you could look here. Look what happened. In the first 15 days, this thing moved up, what, 5.25%. This thing was saying it's going to move a 3.9. This actually moved 5.9% here, and it happened in the first three days. This is a daily time frame there, so you could easily have found a setup on a 60 minutes, two hour, four hour to take this thing up north. Okay, there's another one here. Uh, if you look in this one here, this is basically H uh, Haveli uh, H A V E L S India. Uh, this is 91% probability here, average move of 12%, and you could see here that basically notice this date was when? November 6th. November 6th was right there. Look at the movement up here that basically occurred, okay? Uh, here's UK. Here's a UK stock here, CWK. This was November 1st. So here's CWK that basically occurs. November 1st was, sorry. So yeah, November 1st. So this is basically the October 21st. The November 1st is right there. You can see it moved an average about 4% higher. And basically the prediction was about 6.1. So it kind of fell short of the prediction, but you still got everything accurately because you're trading this on a lower time frame. Okay. The number one is basically the bearish of uh, November 1st here, STAN. If you look at here, that's STAN. You could see here, that was the date right there. Next day, look what happened to this instrument. It dropped down 7% there, okay? So those are some quick examples of some foreign markets and so forth there, okay? So Z, we got uh, Z. Uh, he's going to come and present a couple of more examples for you, some things that basically he's looked at and seen so you guys could see a different perspective and different way of going for things. See you there? Yep, I'm here. Do you want to, uh, would I be able to control the screen here? Uh, just tell me what to do. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Z. I've been a student of Manisha's uh, for a couple of years now. And uh, uh, speaking specifically about this Nality software, I can tell you that it has honestly uh, transformed the way I've traded. And uh, these, this has really given me some of the, the best trades that I've ever taken and consistently. And uh, let's just go through some examples and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. So this one, I'm not, all my trades are pretty much from October. I wanted to keep it relevant for you guys. And uh, I mainly trade U.S. stocks and uh, currencies. So let's, uh, let's go through that. So this is STT over here. You can see from October 2nd, confidence 90%. Expected average move of 7.7 .7, with a max drawdown of 4.2. So not quite the 3 to 1, but let's take a look at what happened. So as you see, that green shaded area means there's a bullish opportunity. Um, and as you can see, that opportunity set up at the end of September. But as you can see, that vertical line that I drew, we entered um, 
uh, you could have entered either a bullish uh, breakout or a pullback. But I personally took the pullback here uh, at those crosses right there and uh, took it all the way till uh, uh, where, where the price hit our stop loss again at the green dots. And this ended up giving me a 6.8 to 1 uh, reward risk ratio. Well, see, did you trade it for buying the stock or for options? Well, I, I personally uh, trade uh, all equities through options. Okay. So, so even though you see it as a 6.84 to 1 here, um, it's much, much more in the options world, but let's not get into that. Okay. And then that was October 2nd. This is October 3rd. The next day, confidence of 95%. Average move of 7.4% is what we're looking at. So let's go to the chart. Once again, you can see <coughs> uh, about exactly on, on, on October 3rd, as uh, seasonality told us, we entered a bullish breakout here. And uh, again, we took it till we got stopped out at our stop loss, which is the green dots that we use. <coughs> and uh, we got a one-to-one -one on this. Um, so you know what? We're not too uh, unhappy about that. We still got a one-to-one and uh, seasonality served as a catalyst there. Just jumping ahead to October 31st here, uh, AON, um, average move we're looking for is about 5%. Let's see what happened. So as you saw on, on that seasonality, it showed a bullish, uh, potential bullish uh, setup. However, as Manish mentioned uh, repeatedly, seasonality is just really a catalyst and we have to lean into the charts and let them tell us what to do. So in, in this particular situation, we see that a bear setup occurred and uh, this was a breakout because it never pulled back. So we took this and once again, uh, we exited at where we got the black dots and uh, we got a risk to reward of one to one there. So once again, uh, not too unhappy with that. <coughs> okay. So, so those were part of the calendar scanners. And now just to give you an example of, the, the trades I took in October through just the free version of the software. And you can see here DUK, which is Duke Energy Corp. Uh, we got the confidence of 80%. That's the check mark. That's what we're looking for. And then SIV of 14.7. That's perfect. Um, let's take a look at the charts. <clears throat> look at that. That's, uh, that's perfect. Uh, about, you know, close to halfway into the month there. Um, we got a bullish setup. We got a breakout. And, uh, and up it went and we got, uh, we exited at about uh, the green dots right there. Yep. And that we got a over a two to one risk to reward on this one. <coughs> and then Boeing was another great one, uh, 75%. And then SIV of 21.3, which is uh, pretty massive. So that's something uh, that excites us a lot for sure. Let's look at the charts. On this, uh, on this one, as you can see, I saw the bullish setup and we took a pullback trade as it worked out. And uh, we got a three to one risk to reward here um, as we exited right there. Yep, perfect. Lockheed Martin is another one, um, 84% confidence, 15.7 SIV value. Um, <clears throat> Even though, and you'll see the risk to reward here is actually kind of inverted because expected move was uh, on average 3.7 and max drawdown was 4.2. But you know what? We have what we're looking for. So let's take a look at the charts and let them tell us what to do. Even though that was a bullish uh, set, uh, bullish seasonality pattern that we were looking at, we got a bear set up here. So um, you, you actually can't see where the pullback actually touched the crosses. I guess that is covered a bit there, but it did. It uh, We got into the pullback trade there, and this was another great one, which uh, took us to six point, approximately 6.5 to 1 um, as we exited there. And actually, it's actually much more. I actually missed the black dot all the way at the bottom. So this is probably almost a 10 to 1 if you actually look at it. <coughs> Apple, everybody's favorite. Uh, 86% confidence, SIV of 17, and uh, we, all, we almost have the three to one on this one with the move of 7.9 and a drawdown of 2.6. So let's look at the chart. <clears throat> yep, this was a uh, bullish breakout that occurred uh, near the end of the month, and uh, we almost ended up with what, just under a two to one on that breakout. Yep, we exited right there. Tesla, another popular, uh, stock that people are talking about all the time. I love Confid this trade. <laughs> this is a great trade. Everyone was thinking bullish. Bullish, yeah. bullish, bullish. 
Yeah, so we had a confidence of 90% with the SIV of 13.8. And uh, the risk reward also was uh, uh, more than a three to one there. <coughs> and so yeah, we did get a bearish on that Tesla and you saw it went uh, all the way to the black dots there, which gave us uh, you know almost a two to one on the risk reward. Okay, moving on. Just to give you another example of another instrument, the New Zealand CAD, and this is again on the, on the free scanner, if that's what you are interested in. And looking at the confidence of 90% with SIV over 10, that's good. Let's look at the charts. Once again, this turned out to be a bear setup. So not, uh, uh, not worried about that, just letting the charts tell us what to do. Uh, that, so this was a, a breakout trade and uh, it went quite far, you can see, and we got stopped out. Um, all the way down there, so which is about a th just over three and a half to one. Another currency example for everybody, a CAD yen here. We got the confidence of 70, <coughs> excuse me, 78% with SIV of 12.9. Um, and it's saying bullish, so let's take a look. So it, it was a bullish setup. We got a breakout there. Um, and eventually we got taken out at those green dots, uh, ended up with a risk reward of 1.72 to one. You can see these are only trades that I'm pulling off of for October. So this is just last month. So, I mean, already you've seen plenty and I haven't made a complete list. I just went over and uh, found some of them. These might not even the, be the best ones. So Manish, let's keep going on, please. So we got the Alaska Air Group, once again from the calendar scanner, you can see the SIV here is 22.8, and average expected move is 21.7% with a max drawdown of 2.4. So that's, that's a big uh, move. That's, yeah, that's uh, one of the bigger ones. And this actually ended up um, setting up bearish, not bullish. And uh, as you can see there, uh, it was a breakout. We took it and uh, it tanked on earnings, um, which was perfect because uh, that, that kind of uh, turned out to be another catalyst in the picture. Well, let's not go in too much detail there. And uh, yeah, that went down big. And ICE is another one, Intercontinental Exchange <coughs> against SIV of 15, max drawdown of four. Middle of the month there. Again, set up a uh, bearish here, breakout trade. Uh, again, over a three to one. Consistently, you're seeing trades that are around the, uh, the you know, three to one reward risk or, or higher. So Z, why do you why do you why are you trading a sixty minutes only? <coughs> why not higher? Well, you have to think about it, right? You, if if the seasonality scanner or just even this free software, it's telling you for a thirty day period, you you want to be able to trade on a time frame where you will be you'll be able to take advantage of that seasonality and be able to stay stay in that trade for the duration of that thirty day period. Sixty days, sixty one twenty or two forty are pretty much. Uh, depending on what works for you as well around those times uh, time frames are ideal to 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 trade those setups yeah and if you look at this z you notice that this roughly started around the 16th but if you look at a couple of days before the 13th right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The trend started to the 25th that's 13 days isn't it <coughs> yeah so yeah. an average trend on the 60 minute could last anywhere from 10 to what 13 days yep. if the cycle yep. happens in 15 day increments at the first of the 30, 30 day or 15 the second the best are what the 60 minute time frames 60s yep. unless your higher time frames are supporting you then 60 minutes are the best aren't they yep yeah and you've seen all my trades are uh, really coming down to the 60 minute okay uh, near the end of the month we had uh, ed which is uh, average move of 4.1, max drawdown of 3.3. Let's take a look at that. It's, it's at a bearish setup, but we got a bullish uh, breakout on this one um, and uh, went all the way. And actually, this is one that, that we're still in, if, if, you, if you wanted to stay in, because this is still running. But there's actually a black dot there that you, uh, you would have exited on. But I just wanted to show you that these aren't just trades necessarily from last month. This started right at the at the middle to end of last month. So this one's still running. <clears throat> okay, thanks C. Yep, no problem. Okay, any questions? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Steve, yes, you could call. I mean, just going for the questions real fast. 
Will this work consistently for long-term trades? Yeah, so the question comes down to is, will this work consistently for long-term trades, say two weeks to four months? Yes. So Jerry, it can. What you're looking for long-term trades is two months of a cycle. So let me switch over to the software and I'll, I'll show you that and what I mean by that. So give me one stack. You share and software. Okay. So let me log in and let's go for this. So let's look at Apple. Let's just look at the what everyone looks at. Okay. So if you're looking for something long term, then what you want to do is you want it to be a seasonal pattern that's not just for one month, but two months or so. Okay. So if you look in here in July, there was an 80% here for July. Okay. And then if you sit there and look at August, this was not a 70%. So that's not a cycle there. Let's look at June. June was not either. So if you want something more longer term, Jerry, you're kind of trying to find a cycle that's at least have two months in a row where basically you have that seasonal index value 70% or higher. Okay. You're not going to always find it there because believe it or not, most markets are not going to give you that, especially with pullbacks. Right. But that's what you're going to be looking for. Now, remember, we're doing 30-day cycles. The reason why is a lot of people want their money really fast within a month. Okay, If we did longer cycles for seasonality, then you would see more longer-term basis and stuff like that, quarterly and stuff like that. But we don't have that in the software yet. In future releases, we probably will sit there and add something like that where we could look at quarterly stuff for you guys. But right now, everything in the software is designed to 30-day cycles. Uh, reason why is it's quick in and out, where you could trade pre-earnings, post-earnings, uh, gaps, and everything, and all kinds of different types of strategies, too, by using that 30-day cycle there. And you can see when on Z, uh, on a couple of them, he's still in, and they've been going for a long, long time. So, you know, it just depends on your time frames and what's going on in those charts. If the higher time frames are supporting it and your lower time frame trade triggered in a direction over higher, then that trade's going to go for a while. And it can typically go for two weeks to one, uh, two months or one month too, especially if the higher time frames are supporting it. Okay. Uh, most of the seasonal top trades are breakout trades an example. No, Tappan, uh, they were not. There was a lot of pullback in there too. It just means you have to sit there and wait for the pullbacks. For us, we're looking for our crosses for pullbacks. Once we get them, then we'll sit there and trade them. But we always look for that pullback trade first. If we don't get it based on our trading plan, then we pretty much resort to breakout trades. And we're not worried about breakout trades. The reason why is our trading plan is structured uh, so breakout trades have high probabilities behind them. Okay. Uh, will you use Ichimoku patterns for seasonality? Remember, seasonality is just a glorified scanner. You have to pump it through some type of technical analysis. As you guys know, our specialty is Ichimoku, so we pump it through Ichimoku. If your specialty is something else like Fibonacci, Elliott Wave, Moving Averages, Bollinger Bands, that's perfectly fine. Find the opportunities, the high probability of opportunities in the alert trades, and then pump them for your technical analysis to tell you if there really is an opportunity there. If so, when do I enter? Where do I enter? Where my stops are? How do I manage a trade? And so forth. Okay. So this is not a technical tool for you. This is pretty much a glorified a scanner to find high probability setups for you to look at. Okay. Um, Z, do you trade? Z, here's a question for you. Do you trade in the money or out of the money? Um, more out of the money. More out of the money. Why? Um, you're, well, I mean, it's kind of uh, getting into the Greeks there, but I mean, you're looking for uh, the price of your option to start, you know, ramping up as, as uh, you, you're looking to make money as you're getting closer to to add the money, which will start uh, making you a lot more money once you're in the money. Yeah. One of the things that we teach in Options University, which Z went through, is, is that when you enter a trade, you want to keep your risk low. Okay. Uh, reason why is you don't know if it's going to take off or it's going to reverse on you. So the whole idea in order to be consistently profitable is to keep your risk low. If you do in the, if you do out of the money, your risk is lower compared to in the money. So our goal is basically to choose an option that's out of the money, Okay, but then make sure that once it starts going, it gets into a scenario where it's in the money. So we don't go far out of the money at all to a point you'll never get to that level at all. Our goal is to, for it to sit there and get, go, get in cheap, 
let it run and then sit there and go in the money where basically we're in bonus round and that's when you're hitting three to one and more or reward risk ratios on these options, okay? Uh, so we look for bullish, to set, uh, whatever the data, yeah. You, if the data says it's bullish, of course you got a higher probability if it's bullish, but if you got a setup that's bearish and your higher time frames are bearish, then I'll definitely take it the other way. It's basically just, you gotta make sure that whatever trading time frame you're taking, the higher time frames are supporting you. If it is, then you go that way. If it's not, then I would walk away from it. Well, why is if you're getting a bunch of signals, you're taking breakouts and shorts and vice versa? Uh, Amos, I'm not quite sure your question at all. Um, why are you getting a, uh, if you're getting a bullish signal, are you taking breakouts, shorts, and vice versa? So Amos, uh, you know, you have your trading plan. So your trading plan will tell you what time frame you dictate. As you can see, Z's trading plan is basically a 60 minute for seasonal opportunities there, okay? So he's going for a 60 minute around the basically date, the start date of the seasonal software and looking for a setup. If it's bullish, he's gonna start setting for a bullish setup. If it's bearish, he's gonna set up for a bearish setup. So he's allowing the charts to dictate exactly what's going on, okay? Now, if the seasonal software tells you it's bullish and he's got a bullish setup, there's no thing to think about at all. You look for a setup and go. If the seasonal software is telling you it's bullish and you have a bearish setup, then Z's only going to sit there and take that bearish setup if the higher time frames are bearish too. If the higher time frames are bullish, he's going to walk away from that opportunity. Okay. If I'm long and the stock breaks into the cloud before the 15th of the month, do I take the loss? Danny, that's a question we have to look at a chart and evaluate there because it depends on what the higher time frames are doing, what the IMTFs are doing, and so forth. Uh, just because price goes in the cloud doesn't mean it's going to stop. There's a lot of times price will go into that cloud and keep on going to the other side of that cloud too. So it just depends on exactly what's going on with that situation uh, for us to be able to answer that question. Okay. Um, is there any other questions? Oh, here's some more. Uh, is, is what we showed you paid version or free? We showed you both versions in there, okay? So it's both Z and I basically went through initially, gave you a lot of examples from the free version, and then basically we showed you a lot of examples for the paid version. I mean, think about this way. How much did the paid version cost you? It's $100 a year. That's less than what, 41, 31 cents a day, okay? So, and believe me or not, one trade is going to pay for that software for over years, okay? So $100 a year is pretty much a no-brainer price that we gave everyone. It's an annual subscription for 100 bucks, okay? So that's why we gutted the price is we want everyone to start using this and not having to pay for expensive software, data feeds, or anything like that because you could see it's a great place to sit there and find high probability setups for any global instrument out there. Um, most analysis is based on support resistance and entry levels. Chuck, you're always looking for a setup. If you don't have a setup, we're not taking it at all. We're not zone trading between support resistances or anything like that. Uh, what templates are you using with your charts? So, uh, Christina, we basically use each uh, what we call an IMTF indicator, and that's what we use for our setups and stuff like that. Um, okay. Uh, can you go over a uh, pattern recognition thing that you did earlier? Uh, Donna, I'm not going to go for it again, but if you look in the chat room, I basically gave you guys a website you could go to. It's our online tutorial there. It's step-by-step -step and shows you exactly how to use the software. It's a lot of fi small five-minute videos uh, that basically give you a complete course there. So if you go to imtftrade.com, register for free there and go into the education there's a tutorial for seasonality and you could go through that and i'll show you the patterns again there for you uh what's the difference between free and paid free basically looks at the beginning of the month to the end of the month the uh, paid version basically looks at whatever that date in the calendar is 30 days out so it's pretty much gives you a calendar for every opportunity for whatever day uh, expiration options, how many days away. Uh, typically, we uh, only buy calls and puts when uh, volatility is average or low. If uh, volatility is high, we pretty much are doing verticals. Uh, our <coughs> when we buy calls and puts, our goal is to exit that position 30 days before expiration, before time decay gets into play. If we're doing verticals, we're typically doing verticals 30 or 45 days out due to time value uh, and so forth there. Um, 
expiration. Da, da, da. Can you show me again just a screenshot of the paid? Uh, this is the paid version here. So this this is a free version here where you just go in, you click on search, and you probably type in Boeing and stuff like that. Okay. If you got the paid version, you'll see this menu option here called opportunities. And in here, you click what mark 90%. I want to see US. I want to see November. And then I want to see week one, week two, whatever week, and so forth. It'll tell you every day where the opportunities are. And if you put your mouse over there, you could see the confidence value and stuff like that. Let me zoom in. So if I come in here November 24th, that tells me that OMC right there is an opportunity there. So you could look forward for all the way in November. And then this month, you could look in December. So you could start planning and going from there, everything there. Um, okay. Uh, uh, the website, if you look here, let me give you the website again. Let me type it again for you guys right there. Okay. Now, let me do another new share. Okay. If you guys are interested in basically buying the software, all you have to do is go to ichimukutrade.com slash seasonal, and I'll type it into this window here too. And basically, you could sign up right away and get the promotional offer of $99 a year. This is an annual subscription. It's only $100 a year. And that you guys could basically get and pretty much start moving forward with. Um, uh, Caesar, you said, how does the equity curve look like on the seasonal setup? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that um, at all there. Um, Let's see. Uh, please tell me if it's if, if, if a stock. Now, there's a question. If a stock has come in on a scanner November 1st, I track it for, until 3rd or 4th of November, and if nothing comes up, I track it again November 5th. Yeah, 15th. Yep, that's correct. Captain. Yep. Okay. So here again, I, we gave you the two websites uh, there. The one's the tutorial, one's basically the link to purchase the software there. Um, Christina, I'm not sure what you mean by template uh, at all. Are you talking about the charts? Okay. If you're talking about the charts, then what you could do is uh, that's dealing with our IMTF indicator. So email us here. If you guys have questions about the IMTF indicator or technical setups, you could email us at info at eiicapital.com and you could get more information on that there. Okay, Christina? Okay, I'm going to wrap up for you guys now. Um, one thing we are doing, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, one of the projects that we've taken on, um, we've done a lot of projects in Colombia. One of the things that we're doing is, is we're doing a charity thing out in Colombia right now where there's a city called La Gajera uh, in Colombia. Basically, it's near Cartagena, uh, near the beach areas in Colombia. And there's a lot of kids right there that are poor right now. They don't have any gifts and stuff like that. And there's an article here. You guys could go to that link right there and you could see exactly what's going on there. So a lot of these kids are poor. They don't have immunization, nothing. So one of the things we're doing is, is on behalf of the company, we are donating some money there. We're already giving a lot already. If you guys want to make any donations, you could basically do a PayPal link to empotel at eiicapital.com, and all donations will go directly to the kids. It doesn't go to any administration at all. Uh, we're pretty much buying Christmas gifts, immunizations, and stuff like that. And uh, we're taking all these kids there. So we're pretty much doing everything now. And what's happened is by Saturday, we're going to pretty much get by all the gifts, the, the donations, all that stuff will be done by Saturday and uh, pretty much get ready for Christmas and so forth. So if you guys would like to make any donations, please send it here in the title on PayPal. Please like donation, Columbia donation that we know is basically for there and everything will go there. But the good thing is, is that there's no administration fees or anything like that. So whatever money you give pretty much directly goes to these kids. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Tap in, you have to email uh, info at eiicapital.com. Uh, 
uh, yes, that's a promotional offer, Ron, the $99 a year, and it will be going up. Okay. That's a wrap up, guys. If you guys don't have any other questions, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you, uh, recording will be available for one to three business days, I mentioned. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, you could email us at info at eiicapital.com. Uh, we've given you the link to purchase. We've given you basically the tutorial. And then also we give the information if you want to make any donations here to the Columbia Kids Foundation there. Okay. That's it. Hope everyone enjoyed it and you guys found it very valuable and good trade, good hunt trading.